r slash ask reddit what is more dangerous than people think steam i work in power plants not scared of anything else i'm around and i use explosives for work but duck steam pressurized steam no one has respect for unless you work with it every day many people think boiling water steam is hot and that's it but when you get pressurized steam it will literally boil you alive in seconds and the pain is instant but then goes just as fast because it cauterizes the nerve endings and blood vessels. I boiled the skin off one stroke to my hand because of one wrong second at work. Because of proper treatment no lasting after effects except that half of my hand is super sensitive to heat water. Sun. Steam. Air I can't handle anything above lukewarm even 6 years later. The technology of treating burns is amazing. I had this cast that had a gel insert that had to be changed every other day. It was used to provide moisture to my burn 24-7. Still shocked I have no scar. Steam is brutal. To help explain this, take the hydraulic fluid answer from elsewhere in the thread, and now add in that steam leaks will melt flesh far quicker, and are invisible and silent. Something something use a broom and watch for when the end of the broom vanishes. Hiking by yourself. Seriously, last year, a guy I grew up with disappeared. The local area has numerous hiking spots, some that can be a bit dicey. Long story short, he fell and died. The saddest part was he obviously was knocked unconscious or died instantly, because he was only a 5-10 minute hike from the nearest access point road, and he did have his phone on him. Still, he wasn't found for days when he was missing. Be safe out there folks. You don't need to be in the middle of nowhere to have a fatal accident. But there's a park near Colorado Springs where they strap a GPS locator on your wrist before you can go hiking mountain climbing. It saves the rescue teams a shitload of time and trouble. Edit. To all of you from Colorado Springs. I must have the location wrong. My cousins came to my aunt's house for a visit. And I arrived in the middle of them talking about this place. So I probably just assumed it was near Colorado Springs because they grew up there. My cousins are not liars. And neither am I. Hydraulic systems. 3000C hydraulics won't even hesitate to remove your limbs. Adding to that, a leak at a hose under pressure can result in a nearly invisible 5. 000 to 10. 000 pound spray of hydraulic fluid depending on the application. It can punch straight through flesh and tends to follow bones when it gets inside. It's corrosive. So you can't just leave it. Everything it touches has to be irrigated. This can include cutting along the path of the injection injury, opening the wound, and spraying it out with saline solution. Needless to say, if you have to have that done, recovery takes a while. Not getting it done will mean your tissue being destroyed and potentially losing the affected body parts. In the navy we were always told a legend of a guy who tried to stop a hydraulic leak with his finger and pumped his arm full of hydraulic fluid. Cows. Cows kill a lot of people each year compared to the scary animals. I lived next to a small cow farm growing up. 99. 9% of the time they were docile and sweet and you could go right up to the fence and feed them. But just one time I saw the bull get actually mad. Not posturing and showing off for his ladies. And he cracked the fence post we were standing on the other side of. We stopped feeding the cows for a while after that. My dad had one lean into him when he was shoveling shit when he was a kid. It was crushing him into a wall with its weight. His buddy had to crack the cow on the head with a shovel to get it moving. I hear it was a mean spirited bull at times. They had a small dog that would get it into the barn by chasing and biting at its nutsack. Chill eating. People get a ton of injuries doing that. Apparently throwing people around and stacking them on top of each other is not always a good idea. But a girl I went to high school with got an orbital fracture from a catch going wrong and the other girl's elbow smacking down on her eye. I haven't heard of that happening in any other high school sport. My sister has always been obsessed with cheerleading. She can't do it because she has titanium rods along her spine. But she got elected to be the school mascot next school year. Which her body can handle. I just hope the world stops ending so in person school can be a thing. I want to see her be the mascot so bad. Not getting enough sleep. I went through a period of bad insomnia. Like no more than one hour a night if I was lucky enough to even get that. I couldn't even function. It literally felt like I was going insane. 
I couldn't sleep for several days while visiting my family, and on the way back home I was sitting on the airplane wondering why I was flying to that city. It took me several seconds to remember that I lived there. In the end I decided that I had been not dead tired when I bought the plane tickets, so it was probably okay. Still scary, it felt like I was drunk and befuddled. Pregnancy and giving birth. When you learn how many ways being pregnant can kill you it makes you realize how much of a miracle it is that our species has survived. This is exactly why I'll never change my mind that pregnancy should be 100% voluntary and not forced via legislation. There are many ways pregnancy can kill you or cause negative lifelong issues. People should have the option to not go through that. A few years ago, one of my friends died because he climbed a pile of logs. The logs started rolling over him. Don't do that, please. I'm sorry for your loss. Oh man. That sounds horrifying. I'm sorry he, and you, went through that. Burning PVC. If someone throws some old PVC siding, the fake plastic stuff they put on houses, into a fire, if you inhale the smoke and gas your lungs are ruined and you are pretty much a dead man. Burning plastics in general emits nasty thick black smoke that is full of harmful carcinogens. 2-3 breaths of it will make you unconscious. You can gather quite a bit of information about a fire from the smoke. Please check your smoke alarms people. They save lives. One of the stupidest things I did when I was around 5-8 old. I thought I could make a pipe to smoke so I got a 18 inches length of PVC that was maybe 1 stroke 2 inch wide and lit the end on fire and then put the non burning end up to my mouth and inhaled the black burning gas. My lungs quit working and I couldn't breathe so I panicked and dropped the pipe and ran about 30 yards to go inside my house hoping my parents could help me. Right as I got to the door my lungs started working and I took a breath. I never told my parents. I don't have any lung issues that I'm aware of and I'm 35 now. Again one of the stupidest things I did as a kid. Electricity. You can't see it. You can't smell it. You can't hear it. But that mother ducker can kill you. I learned that the hard way when I was a kid. Now as a grown ass adult I stay the duck away from anything that could put me in close or direct contact with electricity. You can't smell electricity. However when electricity forms plasma arcs or burns material, it oftentimes creates ozone. Which has a very distinct smell that I can best describe as burning electrical smell. And if you smell it, it's probably a good idea to figure out where it's coming from before too late. That smell put me in max alert every time. Garage door springs. The spring is under constant tension. A sudden failure can cause the spring to break apart violently. Came to say this. Those springs are scary. Hire someone to replace your garage door. Really? When I was a kid around 13 I changed the garage spring with my dad and only halfway through the process did he tell me that if I messed up and let go of the metal tube holding the spring that we would probably both die. Should have given me a ducking warning beforehand dad minor impact on the calves, like missing a step, tore an Achilles this way. Listen, if you feel like you kinda pulled your calf, please get that checked out. Don't be an idiot, like me, and think it's general soreness and continue running, improperly, which is how it got pulled to begin with, or working out. I ended spending 14 weeks doing physical therapy, developed plantar fasciitis in both feet, and still to this day have pain while walking up steep hills or down multiple flights of stairs. It's been about 4 years now. Take care of your calves. This seems like a stupid answer, but black bears. For some reason people associate black bears with being timid and safe to be around. Sure they are less aggressive than a grizzly or polar bear, but they are still bears and should be avoided when possible. I used to live in an area that had an abundance of black bears and seasonal tourists. I have had to tell people that the bears aren't nice and to keep their kids away. Feeding bears is a huge no, but people do that too. Stupidly associating themselves as a food source. This is not a stupid answer. You know how they tell you to play dead if a grizzly attacks you? That's because grizzlies don't typically view humans as prey. If one attacks it's almost certainly a mother defending its cubs. And will move away if it stops perceiving you as a threat. This is not so with black bears. Who are extremely opportunistic omnivores. If a black bear attacks you. 
there's a good chance it wants to eat you. And a black bear that wants to eat you absolutely will not stop trying to eat you until it is shitting you out the next morning. Playing dead will only make it easier for the bear to have dinner. You fight the ducker with everything you have. Don't duck with them. I was visiting family when a bear wandered into the town and prompted a whole day of searches and schools being shut down. It was a densely populated area so it was assumed that the bear was scared and hiding. Which will make it more dangerous. Took 12 hours to chase it out. At a boy scout camp I went to. Some kids left food out to purposely attract bears. They came into the site after the kids left for merit badges and destroyed 20 tents. And broke expensive equipment such as camp stoves. The bears kept coming back the rest of the week for food and eventually were shot. They're not hard to avoid normally. They live deep in forests and are scared of humans. Usually just waving your arms and yelling will scare one off. But if they're hungry, you're screwed. Horse riding. Actually handling a moody 500 kg animal can easily lead you to broken bones. In this sport we all know some people who will spend their life in a wheelchair. I was riding with my family when I was 12. We were a ride for fun horseback riding family. Something spooked the horse and it threw me off into a fence and I barely escaped with my life. Two months in the IQ with fractured spine, collapsed lung, ruptured spleen, concussion, stitches, and other injuries. I was wearing a helmet and had had training. Definitely dangerous when it goes wrong. I heard the best way to make sure a horse won't hurt you is to quietly approach it from behind and pinch it really hard on the butt. He will respect your stealth and courage. Or kick you in the chest so hard your ribs come out your back. A little bit of flood water covering the road. Hydroplaning is scary. In college, my roommate, a few people from my floor and I went out for dinner. It was pouring. I was driving my little car and we came to a spot that you couldn't tell was covered in water. We started hydroplaning. I stayed calm somehow. Every other person in my car started screaming their heads off. They couldn't believe I stayed calm through it all. Best part is we got back to campus I dropped them off in front of the dorm and then went to find a parking spot. On my walk alone back to the dorm I fell down the hill and got a concussion. Again, calm as can be, walked into my room covered in mud and soaking wet. They're all freaking out and I'm acting like it's any old day. Living downstream of an old dam that hasn't been properly maintained. Or an old bread factory. There are a huge number of yeast infections in this county. Measuring tape, like the metal strip kind that contractors use. My older brother's one got jammed, and without warning while he was trying to get it to retract. It suddenly and rapidly retracted while he was holding it, and lacerated his finger to the bone. Now half his finger is numb and immobile, and it bled a ton. Just a few months ago, I was measuring my closet for some shelves. The tape measure got caught under the baseboard molding, and I got frustrated and pulled on it. It sliced my index finger pretty deep right at the last crease. I probably should have gotten stitches, but I didn't, and I have some scar tissue and weird sensation whenever pressure is applied to that area. I am very cautious around tape measures now, and after I pulled on it, it was still stuck under the molding. I was so mad at myself. That sounds very much like what my older brother did, index finger and all. Luckily his wife is a PA and suited his finger really well. It's healing pretty well too. A dull knife. Can confirm. Work in a kitchen. A sharp knife is a safe knife. A dull knife requires way way more pressure to cut something and has a higher potential to slip while cutting. Also, a dull knife leaves a jagged cut which hurts more. Can do much more permanent damage and takes longer to heal. Basically heavy pressure plus slipping sideways plus a dull cut can destroy your whole hand. I've been told this. A sharp knife will do what you want. A dull knife will do what it wants. Being obese. You put your body in a high risk and make it weaker to other diseases. It's a slow death like the lobsters cooked alive. I've tried to make this point to people so many times only to get accused of fat shaming. Maybe because nobody who is fat aside from the odd freak chow on tumblr, actually believes they are healthy. They already know being fat is bad. They don't need you to point it out. What a rip current almost took a friend's life when I was younger. Scary stuff. Seriously the ocean is powerful and rip currents will tire out even experienced swimmers. You gotta respect the ocean or it will kill you. 
lathe they will turn you into a noodle. Future machinist here, seen it first hand in the school's machine shop. One guy forgot to take the key out of the chuck, he ended up having to get stitches on his arm. He got off easy then. In an intro to engineering class we had a machinist come talk to us. First thing he did was hold up a hand that was missing a finger from an incident decades earlier. He called it a cheap lesson. Hippos. Only animal Steve Irwin was ever afraid of. The man wrestled crocodiles for fun. That tells you something about hippos. Crocodiles themselves don't even duck with them. Lifting heavy things. Just cause you're strong. Doesn't means it's safe to carry it. I've seen a bunch of people get at minimum a sore back, and at worst pull a muscle improperly lifting. It can be dangerous if you don't do it right, and besides, you can lift more by squatting than just bending over to pick it up. Carrying is a different matter entirely, even a relatively light item if big enough or awkward can cause strain, compared to a dense, heavier object. Vending machines. They kill more people than sharks each year. Why are sharks using vending machines? It's not like they can afford to go to a restaurant. Donghead. Toilet tanks when the temperature outside drops below zero. I had no idea those things could explode. Haha, <laughs> what? The tank above the bowl is full of water. Water expands when it freezes. Cars. EHH. It's not that bad of a franchise. And children love it. Lightning McQueen is the most dangerous mother ducker I've ever met. Surfing. People forget it's an extreme sport because even in calm conditions shit can't hit the fan. But this week so far 6 have died. 5 to foam rip current and 1 to a shark. People get degloved amputated fingers. Dislocated shoulders. Teeth knocked out. And concussions regularly on their first lesson. Taught it for 4 years. Maybe I won't take a lesson from you. Choking during sex. Incredible orgasm or death. Sounds like a win-win to me. Anything that involves cutting off breathing during sex. Propaganda. Nobody is immune and we all are affected. No matter what circles you frequent, news you read, etc. We are all being manipulated into thinking certain ways. Buying certain things, etc. Edit. I know buying things may not fit with propaganda. Maybe I should broaden this and just say manipulation. People. Texting and driving. Depression. Clipping your toenails. One wrong move and bang. Blind you are. Good thing I clip my nails like a man. A good thing I wear glasses then. They act as my protective barrier. Alcohol. Yup. Worldwide. Alcohol's got a huge lead on just about everything in this list. It's a pure numbers game. With no way to know for sure if it's gonna grab you by your boo-boo and snap you around like a rag doll. In the U.S. At least, you're either on team party, or you're on team party pooper. There's really no good conversation in between. The comorbidity between alcohol and literally anything else. Depression. Obesity. Stroke. Drug contraindication. Cancer. Etc. Jacks the stats on alcohol into the stratosphere. It's a public health graveyard. Hitting families really hard. Families who are particularly ill-equipped to handle its effects. Modeling healthy and moderate behavior for kids is about the best you can hope for. That, and encouraging people to delay the onset of their first buzz until they're solidly out of their teens and well into their 20s. From a public health perspective, the earlier you cop a high of any kind, the worse your lifetime outcome will be. Though there's no safe amount of alcohol from a medical standpoint, if you keep your consumption within the guidelines, you dramatically reduce your chances of death from any cause, including cancer. It's kind of mind-boggling, considering this single risk factor is entirely avoidable. The internet's most notably social media. Mark spoke about the opiate of the masses being religion. Holy shit did he not know about dumbass Facebook posts from your racist uncle and anti-vax aunt they are literally killing people with their idiotic bullshit they read online. Probably posted by someone with an agenda they would actually not agree with if they had any critical thinking skills. Coconuts. More people die from falling coconuts than sharks. I don't know of anyone that died from a falling shark. I don't know of any cases where sharks died by falling coconuts either. This is not a good thread for the anxious. Florida man. 
trees. Crazy amounts of weight and force overhead. Tree work is one of the most dangerous jobs in the U.S. General Kenobi with the high ground. One person's satire is another person's propaganda, especially now. Wearing a ponytail as a woman, the number one thing stranger rapists identified as leading them to select a target. If you're trained in self-defense, it is hard to get away from someone pulling you by your hair. Put your hair up under a baseball cap, attach a fake ponytail to the hat. If someone yanks your hat off, turn around and pepper spray him and then kick him in the nuts as hard as you can. Dwight? Ignorance. A friendship with a toxic person. The office workplace. So many backstabbing bastards. Cooking geek can't tell you how many fires my dad had to put out when he was younger that got started all because someone forgot to turn something off or that they left something in a pan or pot. If you know the laundry is about to be done or the dog has to go out, wait till you are done then start. The beach, especially for drunks and children. Covered 19 apparently. Stairs, 12. 000 people die every year from falling down the stairs. It's something most people do every day and don't really think about. Stupid people. They breed faster than smart people. Mooses. Whoa. You made it to the end? You're a ducking beast. I'll cast you a deal. Smash like and subscribe for more curated content bruh. It's free and that's a great price.